guys, this video I'm going to talk about AM2 training. Uh, we've been putting quite a few students through the AM2 program. Um, we've had a meeting with our local AM2 centre, the AM2 centre in Liverpool, um, and they've given us a, a list of our common faults that our students are making. So this, this video is directly really aimed at those students, but it will help anybody else who's going in for their AM2, because I'm assuming a lot of people are making the same errors and same common mistakes. If you do go onto the NET website, it's no secret they do have a common errors um, list of all the different sections. So you've got section A, the safe isolation risk assessment. So we've got common errors on there. Uh, we've got the section um, A in terms of completing the installation. And then section B is obviously testing and inspecting. And then C, fault finding diagnosis and then the online exam. So there is a list on there of the overall common mistakes, and I'll, I'll go through those at the end of the video. Um, but in terms of the Warrington and Verrall College common errors, which again, you might find useful, is initially is, is not reading the specification properly. So the initial specification is telling you the cable size. That's really important. A lot of it's wired in singles. Just follow the specification properly. It is a big, a big problem. Um, safe isolation. So safe isolation, a lot of our students, a lot of people think, oh, I could do safe isolation. It's really easy. It's not a problem. Um, but that's where the common mistakes are happening. A lot of mistakes. So not putting the key in your pocket, leaving it on the trolley or on the side. Um, when they're testing the initial safe isolation, you're locking off your three-phase board before the board. So then when you're testing your safe isolation, you need to be testing on the incoming side of the main circuit breaker. So not on the outgoing. That is another common mistake. So it's the key not going in the pocket and testing on the outgoing of the, the main circuit break and not the incoming. So just bear that one in mind. Um, when we're doing our testing, so we're testing the radial circuit, we're testing the lighting circuit. Now once the installation has been, um, been completed, so it's not operating that switch when we're doing our R1 and R2 tests. So obviously there's two points to it. There's another video in our uh, training section which will show you how to do the safe isolation of the lighting procedure. But once you test it up at the, the, the point, at the ceiling rolls, live to neutral, neutral to live, neutral to earth or CPC, then you've got to go and operate the switch. Then go back and repeat the test. So we can test across the strappers. We can test all the cables, okay? Um, next thing, when we're doing our testing and our inspecting, it's not following guidance notes three um, for the whole testing procedure. Uh, you've got to verify your results and you've got to justify them. Uh, what, have I, what, what I have done is that compliant with guidance notes three. That's another one that we're failing for. They can't, they can't tell the examiner the reasons for doing the testing. Okay. Um, when we're testing our R1 and R2s, we're not testing all the way to the motor. We're testing, I'm assuming, up to the DOL. It wasn't very specific and we're not testing all the way to the motor, all right? Um, when we're doing our ring final testing and we're doing our end-to-ends, then we do our figure of eights. In the AM2 centre, they do want you to record all your R1 and RN results. Now, the R1 and RN results, when we do them on a test certificate out in site, we're not recording the result. They are going to expect you to do that on the reverse of the test sheet. Um, they want you to record all the R1 and RNs and they want you to do the R1 and RN divided by four to, uh, to uh, prove that your test results are sound and that they're, um, obviously they comply with the regulations. Um, the next one, data cable. So when we're doing our data, it's a very small fault, not putting the cable tie on, on, the, on the, uh, the cable as it is in the back of the, the data point to make sure that we can do that properly, make sure that that happens. Um, when we're doing our DOL and we're getting that ready for testing, if they're not putting the correct the link, they're not linking it out and putting the correct links on there. So bear, obviously bear that in mind if you're not 100% sure on testing with the DOL or direct online starter, um, make sure you ask your training provider or make sure you're asking questions up or out on site. It's really important. Um, when we're doing our IR test, we're not removing all the vulnerable appliances, anything that could uh, skew our readings or anything vulnerable. Um, on that circuit, okay? There are some uh, neons on there. Um, I'm trying to think what else might be on the circuit, but just make sure you remove anything that might be wrong, all your lamps, all your, all your neons on there. Um, RCBO fly cords, we're not removing those when we're doing our testing on our RCBOs and doing our ring final testing. On your AM2, the only RCBO on the AM2 is 
on the ring final circuit. So make sure that we're doing that. You only have to do it once. Um, ZE, when we're doing the ZE test, so the external earth fault loop impedance test, uh, we are, when we disconnect the main earth from the main earth terminal, we are not putting it back before we continue our tests. If you don't put that back, obviously the whole installation is deemed unsafe and therefore it will be a fail for that section. Okay. Uh, moving on now to the RCDs. So a lot of these are coming up in our fault finding and test inspecting, as you, you can probably gather. Uh, RCDs, not operating that test button. We're not pressing the test button to make sure that the RCD is operational. It's functional. We have to make sure it's functionally sound. Um, and the last one, RCD test time verification. We're writing the test results down, but we're not verifying that they're, they're, they're correct, they're within the time frame. And I'm assuming, so when we're getting asked the question, is that okay, the students aren't understanding the question or they're not giving the correct answer. Now, as you may or may not know, the AM2, when you complete a section, obviously if that's okay, you move on to the next session, section. When you fail a particular part of the AM2, you only have to reset that part. Now, the examiner doesn't know at that point whether you've passed or failed. They just have their iPad or their, their mechanical device. They go around and they'll find, if they see something wrong, they tick. He's not, he's not completed that section, add a bit of notes, and at the end of it, it all tallies up. So it's little mistakes that can just be the tipping point to failing, okay? Um, I'll not rabble on too lo much longer, but we've got the AM2 common faults, um, and it mirrors pretty much what we've just seen now. Um, so actually, um, I, if you would like to go through this, go onto the NET website. It is no secret. The, the obviously the cable selections that you have to work towards, so you have to get signed off by your employer all on there. So you know what cables you're working for. You know what you're working towards. You can get plenty of practice on site or with your training provider and, and make sure. If you've got any questions, either please get in touch or speak to your training provider. Thank you.